That's my the best grandma thing. used to say that. Okay. Well, Ted, it is so nice to welcome you to Dallas. Thank you, Bonnie. We've always talked on junkets, and uh, last time was life. Mm -hmm. With I remember, Eddie I and, remember. and Lawrence, and uh -huh. uh, so it's nice to welcome you to my hometown. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. I must congratulate you on Blow. Wonderful picture. Thank you very much. Wonderful I'm picture. Very proud of it. You know, as I sat there, knowing that it was the life of a real person, mm -hmm. I thought even if it weren't the life of a real person, it's just a heck of a beginning to end story. It's some ride, isn't it? It yeah. is. When I when I first read the book about six years ago, I've, I've had the project for about six years, and when I first read the book, I was just amazed by the story of a small town boy in our country, um, high school football, all American type guy, um, went on to be the uh, only American to infiltrate the cartel, in fact, be Pablo Escobar's right hand man. Um, just on that fact alone, that really intrigued me as a filmmaker and, and reading a story. Um, and then when I met George in prison about six years ago for the very first time, he's a very intoxicating human being. He, uh, he, he's really funny. He's really smart. He told me amazingly sad stories, made me cry. Um, and I left, left him that day feeling very ambivalent about him, you know, um, judgmental in, in kind of what he had done and in his role in society, but I couldn't get him out of my head. And I knew that there was something about him that was really intriguing to me, and as a filmmaker, I thought it would be a great uh, challenge to tell this story of a classic anti-hero um, and show that he was really a human being, and just a, it started off fairly innocently and ended up tragically. And I thought it would be, a, I think it's an important story to be told. You said he made you cry. What kinds of things did he say that made you cry? Well, it, it he, you know, as you might imagine, now that you've seen the film, you, you know, the last 20 minutes are really about loss and loss of life, loss of freedom, loss of innocence, more particularly loss of family. And um, it, it makes me sad that any human being on any level is estranged from the ones that he loves, be it a wife or a, a daughter. Um, so it, it was a tragedy to me. And he, it, that made me very sad, the fact that he's very alone in a jail cell um, with literally no friends and his family estranged from him. So that made me very sad, just on a human level. So it was, it was kind of George talking about his daughter and how he wished that he hadn't done the things that he had done and how he, he wishes to have a relationship with her, that, that made me really sad. He's in prison, of course, and isn't due to get out uh, until... 2014. 2014. What does he... Does he try to project the future when he gets out? As you, as you might imagine, anyone in prison, I would guess, but particularly George, really wishes he were out. <laughs> um, Every day that goes by, he, there's, a, there's a part in the movie where he kind of um, asks the, the guard whether his daughter's on the visiting list. And that's a reality. When I went and visited him many times with Nick Cassavetti as a screenwriter, and then again with Johnny, <clears throat> upon coming into the room, George would always look at the guest list. And I asked him what he was looking for, and he said, I was just trying to see if my daughter was on the list. That was like a ritual that he did. And that was like really powerful to us. Um, so I think he just wants to get out to try to, to say I'm sorry to the people that he hurt and, and be a father uh, to his daughter again and a, a friend to his wife, perhaps. You don't think he'll pick up with any of his former cohorts? I don't think so. Um, I'm pretty confident that he won't. He's 58 now. I think his smuggling days are over. <laughs> and I think the game is very different now than when George was playing in it, if you will. So I, I think um, now that I be, I've become friends with him and, and become very close to him, uh, he actually would, you know, I think he wants to do some good. And, uh, you know, he's been, in, he's been behind bars for about seven years now, maybe eight, eight years. And uh, he wants to get out and, and, and help as opposed to rot and potentially die in, in prison. Is he a bitter man? I don't think George is bitter. I think he's angry. I think he's angry at himself. 
he often talks about how the ride that he's been on was one of the most incredible rides that you could ever be on. And he actually has never really told me that he wouldn't do it again. I think he'd do some things differently, um, but he's, he's angry with himself that he, he, took, he just kept taking it one step further. He didn't know when to stop. He didn't know when to get out. He didn't know when to go, enough is enough, let me become a normal person again. Because part of what happened, Bobby, was that he, he didn't know how to do anything different. You know, what he did, what he did. And uh, it's a common thread, and you know, you see it in a lot of movies and you see it in a lot of stories where, you know, criminals only that and how to become criminals. When they come out, they try to get regular jobs and they can't. Um, it's a pretty tough cycle to break, I think. And in particular, you know, George at his heyday had probably about $100 million cash. You know, and here's a guy in, in two years in the business, in 1977, so imagine what that's worth today. But, you know, here's a guy who didn't have enough places to hide his money. He would go and buy houses just so he could buy air conditioning systems to hide his money in. There's a one sequence in the film where they're, they, they run out of room in the house, you know, and I really thought that was funny. These guys would, would, would just buy houses to stash their money. And he used to tell me, he used to, you know, he'd say, Teddy, you have to understand, we wake up in the morning and go, what do you want to do today? You know, you want to go to Rome? Let's buy a plane and go to Rome. And let's go stay in a hotel for as long as we want. As a matter of fact, let's buy the hotel. You know, you want to go fishing? Let's buy a yacht. Let's go fishing for a week. You want to buy a car? Which one can you I, You know, let's just buy both of them. You know, like these guys, would, they had so much power. They had no bosses. Back then, there was no, they, they were just doing whatever they wanted to. It was the utmost power. It was a God complex. So when you go to there, I, don't, I think it's very difficult to go back to 95, you know? So what happened to all the money? He, he lost it. He spent it. He blew it. An enormous amount was put overseas in Nicaragua in, in, uh, in uh, um, uh, who's, who am I trying to think of? Noriega. Sorry. In, you know, a lot of it was put in Noriega's banks in the 80s. And, uh, and he got wiped out when Noriega, you know, they nationalized all the banks. He lost like 30 million clean. Imagine that. <laughs> Bank error. <laughs> 30 mil. Are all of the characters in the movie real people? Um, yes, all the characters in the film are real people. We, uh, you know, when you make a film, you have to get everyone, when you make a true story, and this is the first time I've ever done this with based on a true story, you need to get uh, permission from those living to use their names in the film. So we got everyone's name and permission to film except two. Um, the character who is portrayed uh, as Diego Delgado um, was a gentleman who's uh, in behind bars for five consecutive life terms in witness protection. So we really couldn't get to him to get his life uh, rights. And uh, the character that Paul Rubens plays, uh, that, that gentleman um, is unable to be found at the moment. <laughs> So we couldn't get his rights either. So we changed those two names in the film, but we kept we uh, what their roles were in George's life were, were fairly accurate. So that person was a hairdresser. Oh yeah. And a dealer. Totally, totally. Yeah, yeah he was the he was the, the part that Paul Rubens plays. Um, Derek for real, we call him. He was the first haired male hair salonist in all of L.A. And he and 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 Paul and I created the character for him. I don't think he was quite as flamboyant as Paul played it, but. Uh, <laughs> But Paul created his own character there, yeah. little dramatic license. Yes, of course. <laughs> Ted, do you fear any repercussions from doing this film? I certainly hope not. Um, you know, I, I tried to, I tried to, uh, to focus on George's life, and I tried not to judge ever as a filmmaker, but just kind of show what happened and what the results were. Um, you know, Mr. Escobar is, is no longer with us, and, and I'm hoping that, uh, that there will, will be no backlash from, from that because we, we really didn't include him that much in the film, but he was a pivotal part in George's rise and fall. And uh, all the people that are, that are in the movie are kind of consultants with us. You know, um, George's wife, Martha, has been extremely helpful in the making of this film and his daughter. So personally, I'm ob obviously hoping that... that uh, People will see this film and, and see it for what it is, which is kind of an indictment of that time period as opposed to a certain person or persons. Does that question of repercussions come up when you're talking 
with the insurance people about doing a film like this? I think when everyone kind of read the script and saw that we weren't, uh, uh, that they, I think everyone felt that we weren't in danger of either having lawsuits or anything like that come against us because we were, it, we our film is based on a book that has come out. So that book has been public knowledge for a while and, and that book stirred up um, uh, none of that kind of controversy. So we were, you know, we're confident. You never know what will happen, certainly, but uh, we feel that we we're pretty uh pretty close in our interpretation of the book, so I think we're, we're going to be okay. How close to the real person did Johnny Depp come? Johnny Depp became George Young. Um, physically, mentally, he, uh, when George saw the movie, which he did, I brought him a cut of the movie on tape and his uh, warden allowed me to show it to him in a, in a small, uh, tiny private lawyer's room. Um, he was amazed and shocked because he'd never seen Johnny before. He never saw a Johnny Depp movie before. George had So he was spooked. Spooked. There was a few times where things were happening, and he was like, man, even down to the walk. <laughs> you know, and those pretty bad haircuts. That's what George looked like back then. <laughs> so Johnny loves doing that. I mean, he's a, Johnny Depp is a chameleon. You know, he changes his colors every single film, which is why I adore him as an actor. And, uh, you know, if you put Donnie Brasco and Ed Wood and Edward Scissorhands and George Young in the same room and told me that they're all the same person, you know, we wouldn't believe it. He's an incredibly talented actor and loves to disguise himself, and that's what I love about him. And I, I too, am a great fan of his work, and he really makes such intelligent choices, doesn't yeah, he? he really does. I mean, Johnny Depp could easily be um, Tom Cruise, Nicolas Cage, you know, any top actor making $20 million or so. Uh, and Johnny's chosen to, to make smaller, uh, perhaps uh, more interesting choices and not repeat um, some of the work that he's done in the past. Um, and that's not a slight at any of those guys. Um, they're, both, they're both wonderful actors. And, you know, but Johnny's, I think, prefers to do more character-y stuff but because he is such a fantastic actor and such a hunky kind of guy. He is a movie star as well. Yes, one can only try to project in 20 years. He'll still be a young man. I know, I know. What know, he'll like be a, doing. I know, he's, he's ageless. You yeah. Know, uh, he's, he's I, I can't say enough about the guy. He's such a, an amazing uh, humanitarian and such a great father and uh, such a dedicated actor that I, I've really been spoiled on this film, I think. I'm, it's going to take me a while to figure out what the next one is and who the next actor is I work with. Is this the first time you've ever done a, a film based on real people? Yeah, yeah. Now, for you, the director, what did you go through? Well, you know, Bobby, for me, it's like y you try to, um, when you do a, f a film based on real people's lives, you try to portray them as accurately as they've given their heart and soul to you. You know, George and Martha and Christina and a lot of other people in this movie told me they're innermost, darkest secrets. Things that weren't that pretty, you know, and allowed me and trusted me that I portray them in the way that they wanted to be portrayed and the way that they were at that time. And that's a real heavy responsibility because you imagine if, if you allowed me to tell me every one of your secrets, good and bad, and then I put that into a movie theater where hopefully millions of people would go see, uh, and I didn't do you right, that would be real hurtful to you and painful to you. So I really, really worked hard on including them in the process and making sure that they were there with me absolutely every step of the way, during the writing of the script, during the first cut of the film, during the final cut of the film, during the making of the film, uh, that they were, they were there. So I, I, I'm hoping that they feel that I, I um, did them right in that respect, and, and I feel confident that I did. All right, Ted. Well, I just wish you all the, Thank you. the best very, of luck very, with very it much. because it's a film, I think, that uh, has a lot to say, uh, so not too. only for today but for the future. Well, thanks. It's, I, I think it was an uh, important story to be told, um, not only because of the consequences of this world and what could happen, but you know, on a smaller, perhaps uh, more personal level about families you know, taking care of each other 
you know, the cycle of what happens when parents don't provide a healthy relationship for their children, those children grow up to probably provide the same unhealthy backdrop that their parents did. And it's this cycle of pain that um, I'm hoping could stop. I think that's a real big problem today. So, okay. okay thank you. And <laughs> it's so much harder to do a good four minute or five minute interview yeah. than to sit down oh, for sure. eight or 10 minutes. Well, you can't let it flow. You have yeah. to just yeah. four questions in and out yeah. to understand. And, and <laughs> okay, I'll just re-ask a few questions sure. and you'll start to answer. Okay. okay. All right. You rolling? Yeah. Okay. At this point in time, is George a bitter man? I don't think uh, George is as bitter as he is angry with himself. Okay. You know. So what happened to all the money? I don't have any of it. <laughs> um, you know, these guys, uh, I think they lost it. They lost just about all their money. They blew it. They spent it or they hid it. How close to the real person is Johnny Depp? Johnny. Let, no, let me rephrase that. Sure. How close to the real person does Johnny Depp portray him? Johnny Depp became George Young. I mean, he really, really became him in phys physical, physically and, and mentally. He really became him. Do you fear any repercussions, Ted, from doing this movie? I certainly hope not. <laughs> um, I don't have enough bodyguards to protect me right now. <laughs> Just got hurt. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> oh, I know. I wanted to ask you, um, and, and we can just go ahead um, sure. this way. Um, in the scenes where you're showing mounds of cocaine, what do you use? Vitamin B and baby laxative. It's not, it's not anything that anyone would want to buy or use. But it's a, just a powder of yeah, vitamin B totally. yep. and baby it's laxative. Powder, powder version of those things, and it's not fun to put up your nose, believe me. Yeah. 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 After about two takes, the actors needed about a half an hour break. It was bad. Talk about a clogged nose. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Are all of the characters real people? Yeah, just about all the the characters that w that are in the film are, are real. You know, you have to get people's rights to to use them in the film. So um, everyone but two, we got to sign off and give us their rights to the film. Okay, I think that'll do it. Sure. Great.